five miles. We struggled, but we may put it together for a nice run. I think bear hunting with hounds is a very, very ethical way to pursue bears. In my ancestry, as far back as I can remember, uh, my family's had hounds. Uh, I've been hunting for about, uh, about 60 years. I'm 73 years old. I started hunting uh, with my dad. Bear hunting with hounds is an activity rooted deep in our American hunting heritage, and more specifically, the heritage of Michigan. Hound hunting for bears became legal in 1939 and has been effectively passed down for generations since. It's a pastime that is more than just a sport, it's a way of life that deserves recognition and protection. The black bear became a protected game species in Michigan because of houndsmen. Michigan Conservation Commissioner Carl T. Johnson, a devoted houndsman, in 1936 initiated the start of the Cadillac Big Game Club, which would later become the Michigan Bear Hunters Association. With the help of outdoor writer Ben East, Johnson persuaded the Michigan DNR to make the bear a protected game animal, which they did. This was a massive win for the conservation of the bear, for hunting, and for houndsmen. Michigan houndsmen were the first allies of the black bear, and they still are today. In the past 20 years, the Michigan Bear Hunters Association has spent over $400,000 to help defend hunting and trapping in Alaska, California, Montana, Florida, Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, and in Maine. The fruit of our conservation efforts are the foundation and ethical positions for our hunting. Bear hunters in Michigan have been fighting for bears since the 1940s when bears weren't even considered game animals. If bear populations are in trouble, we have been and will be the first to encourage lawmakers to make appropriate adjustments in the management plans. Michigan bear hunters deeply value and appreciate bears. We want to see bear populations thrive and hunter opportunity stay strong. What do you got there, buddy? The bear. We live in a time period when black bears are thriving on the North American continent. The North American model for wildlife conservation through hunting is the most successful wildlife husbandry and land conservation endeavor in the history of mankind. Wildlife has not thrived in spite of hunting, but because of modern hunting, hunters, and hunting conservation organizations like the Michigan Bear Hunters Association, the Michigan Hunting Dog Federation, and the UP Bear Houndsmen Association. The family and social aspects of running hounds is unsurpassed in the hunting world. Unlike many of the solo dynamics of today's popular hunting, hound hunting is rarely done alone but usually involves multiple layers of friends and family. In a society where real social contact is being stripped away and there seems to be less and less time for family activities, hound hunting goes against the trend and brings husbands and wives fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, into the outdoors together. Man, that was exciting, wasn't it? Did y'all like that? <laughs> I bet you did. People today are taking their kids and their wives are going, and which back when I first started hunting, there was no women in the sport at all, it was all pretty much all men. 
Uh, so the sport has changed, it's more of this family type sport. The intangible contributions to society delivered through hunting are immeasurable and irreplaceable. Houndsmen have a personal connection to their hounds that is indescribable. What many have failed to comprehend is the heart of the hound hunter and his motivation. The misinformed anti-hunting community would like to stop hunting altogether. Hound hunting is a special target for them because of a fundamental misunderstanding of the macro components of wildlife management and our sport. Hunters are the good guys, and we're the ones putting our money and actions where our mouth is to really help wildlife. There has never been a better time for all hunters to unite to defend our ancient, honorable, sustainable, and scientifically sound way of life. We will fight for our traditions. Seven o'clock in the morning. Nice morning. It's 55 degrees. Uh, one of the guys we're hunting with got a, a dog struck on his box. Got a good strike, so we're gonna go there and turn a few dogs loose, see if they can figure it out and get a bear jumped here. So I grew up in farm country, deer hunting, and I, I never, uh, never really was much of a deer hunter. I don't have enough sit in me for that. And, uh, First time I ever went bear hunt when I was, I think, around 20 years old. I, uh, I said, boy, I gotta get into this. And I got some dogs, and then shortly after that, I quit my job and moved up north. Okay, yeah. so uh, Chris got a rig strike here. The dogs uh, smelled a bear and they barked, and uh, we're gonna turn a couple loose here, see if they can sort out which way it went. When a bear track is found, the dogs that are known for their cold trailing abilities are released first. A track is considered hot or cold based upon how recently it was made. In modern hound hunting, GPS collars are a necessity for the houndsmen to keep the dogs safe as it pertains to when dogs have to cross roads, also in areas that are prone to have wolves. Well, the dogs are uh, trying to figure out this trail. Apparently there's some blackberries in here and the bear's been all over the place. So just trying to get a handle on which direction he's going, where he's headed. Got a couple cold trailers out right now. They're trying to sort it out. Approximately 30 minutes later and one mile away. Okay, we got the bear jumped it sounds like. We're gonna go put some more dogs in. About two miles into the race, we caught up to the dogs and we saw the bear cross the road. The dogs were exactly 25 seconds behind the bear. 20 minutes after we saw the bear cross the road, we saw him cross again and the dogs were a lot closer. Soon after the dogs crossed the road, the dogs treed the bear. There's the bear. Right up the tree. Look, he's he just treed this bear at a nice run, probably five miles, six miles. A little bit humid this morning. The dogs are tired, but they did a real nice job. He comes down. He doesn't want to Bear hunting with hounds in America has a long, rich history. It's been around since the 1700s. In the, in the Carolinas and Tennessee and, and uh, in Michigan, uh, Michigan Bear Hunters, this is our 70th year. So we've been at it for a long time in Michigan too and it's uh, just a neat heritage and we want to educate people about how much fun it is, how it's like catch and release hunting. Uh, I'm the president of the Michigan Bear Hunters and I haven't killed a bear in probably 10 years. I don't really care about that anymore. To me, it's about the dogs and the family and just having a good time. So 
The MBHA organized the first bear hunt in Michigan in 1946. Since then, we've lobbied hard for protection of the bear. We were responsible for putting, making it a game species, establishing a season for it, uh, protecting cubs, protecting sows with cubs. So we have a long history of conservation and uh, care for the resource. Our, our number one concern is responsible management of our wildlife. Hound hunting, we feel just uh, we can be selective in hunting. We can quite often, or most of the time, determine if it's a sow or a boar, you know, and if we can really get a good look at the animal to see if we want to harvest it or not. Um, so, <laughs> hey bud. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, the dogs were tired, but they'd had a great day in the bear woods. Many bear hunters start looking for fresh tracks crossing the road early in the morning before daylight. We found a track and released the first hounds at 8.30 a.m. That's more like it. Been all over the road, all over here. Probably hit another road over there. <laughs> we started over there about 100 yards. They came to this road, which crossed that one. They made a loss right in this area. So we found the track over there, and we put them on it over there, and they started opening and moving. Well, I'm gonna go down to this next spot. After two hours, the dogs were still cold trailing the bear. This means that they hadn't caught up to it yet and were still trailing old scent. Yes, they're cold trailing yet. They're on this road for the last half mile. They're moving pretty good right now. The bear came down this road and we came in to help them, but they did find it down the road a ways, and now they're heading north. It's hard to cold trail on a dirt road, especially when it's raining. After an eight mile cold trailing job, the dogs jumped the bear, and we found his tracks Got crossing the road. Got a few more dogs in there with him. Hopefully we'll get a good day's run out of To the uninformed, it might seem that using hounds for hunting is a guarantee for success. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Bears are amazingly resourceful and fast animals with extreme endurance. A bear's ability to evade the hounds is an inspiration to the houndsman that keeps them coming back. Early in the morning while looking for a bear track, we came across a herd of Michigan elk. Twenty-five minutes later and three miles away, we found a track. Hey, I got one here too. 
Yep, that's right where you come across. All right. Going off in a big section here to the south of us, and we'll, we'll figure out if they can. But they're moving him right along. So we might have to take off and go away around. It'll take us 20 minutes to get around <coughs> to the other side to where they're headed for. Approximately two hours after the dogs were turned out, we caught up with the bear and we watched it cross the road with the dogs not far behind. Within 20 minutes of the bear crossing the road, the dogs had him treated. We struggled, but we finally put it together for a nice hunt. <laughs> you got your son on the grandson. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's Rusty over there. And Mike's son, Cody. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and here comes Miss Annie, too. Yes, they did a nice job for us. It might seem counterintuitive, but the smaller bears are more prone to run longer distances and are often harder to tree than the larger bears. This is a little guy, but you give us a good run, and uh, even during the kill season, he would still be a pretty safe bear because he's not. He's a, just oh, he's 100 pounds, and that give or take. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just let him slide on out of this tree and, and see how big he really is. <laughs> you know, I've been in the Michigan Bear Hunt Association since I've been 12 years of age. Uh, I fell in love with the sport and I've continued to hunt bear with hounds since it's been legal. I spent a couple of years in the service, come out and started manufacturing my own breed of dogs and my own pack of dogs. And, I've spent the last 51 years of bear hunting. Bear hunting is probably the most challenging sport in the out of doors in the world. It uh, requires a lot of energy. It's, uh, it's a kind of an expensive sport, feeding the hounds, you know, 10, eight, 10 hounds every, every day. Uh, it's, but whenever you can run and catch and tree a bear, uh, it's, it's the most rewarding satisfaction you've uh, ever experienced. However, you know, it's, um, we've shared this with many of our legislators. We've shared it with uh, uh, many politicians and, and they have all never had a clue as to the energy that goes into the uh, hunting bears with hounds. Uh, and as you are, have seen from just the previous uh, bear being treed, and that he was a little bear, but was all excited and happy to treat a bear. And and uh, it, it, but bear hunting is a sport I would like to see continue on for my two sons and for my grandchildren. All of my, my six grandchildren are, are are involved with the bear hunting. A wonderful reward to be able to achieve what we did today. Bear hunting in Michigan takes you into some spectacular and wild places that many will never see. Bears are iconic of American wilderness and our public lands are truly the treasure of the masses. We started off looking for a track before daylight and someone in our hunting party saw a bear cross the road around 10 a.m. It's, it's rained quite a bit in them last two hours and the Sable River is just down there not very far so we're hoping that the dogs can get it going and 
stays on this side of the Sable, where it's public ground as opposed to private ground on the other side. So this is all iffy, but that's what we're gonna do anyway. What are you girls doing? Uh, making a sandcastle. Well, your daddy's bear the hunting? One, the last two have been broken. The yeah. last two got broken? By Caden. Oh no, by Caden? Meanwhile, the race moves down the river despite the destruction of the sandcastles. And the action heated up quick. He caught us by surprise, but the bear crossed the road just in front of the truck. Quickly, a few more hounds were put in the race. I guess they were on the bear. Yeah, they were. Uh, it was a long... Tell me what just happened. Well, we've been following these dogs way back past the power lines. We cut them on a cold trail. I guess it wasn't a coyote after yeah. all. And we've been following them all along the river and they never went across and came this way, which is perfect for everybody. This bear's a sow with a half an ear missing. We've treated her several times in the last few years. She doesn't have cubs. <laughs> After a few minutes, the dogs were tied back and the bear came out of the tree. The Michigan Hunting Dog Federation, that's dedicated to uh, allowing us to free cast our hunting dogs and the definition of free cast means allowing our dogs to pursue wild game um, off a leash. We're forced here in Michigan to have a hunting dog federation. We represent 54 different dog organizations in Lansing. We monitor every piece of legislation there is as, as a means to an end to make sure we can keep hunting with dogs. A great deal of people that would want to end that. As you could see from this video today, uh, particular bear hunting, we call it catch and release. And uh, most people think that hound hunting is a, a vicious blood sport, uh, cruel, cruel to the bear, cruel to the dogs. It, nothing could be farther from the truth. I think bear hunting with hounds is a very, very ethical uh, way to pursue bears and the reason for that is once the bears up a tree once the dogs have put the bear up a tree you can truly judge whether you want to harvest that bear or not in the hunting community we hear an awful lot about uh, recruitment and retention uh, how are we going to get new people into hunting well if you looked here today at this video there are several several people maybe a dozen youngsters very young Hunting with these hounds is the most family oriented sport I've ever seen. It's important to us. It's a way of life. It truly is a way of life. When you have dogs like these dogs here, I've had this family of dogs for 45 years. They're not like my children or my grandchildren, but they're somewhere in line after that. And that's how we feel about them. That's the bond we have. That's what we share with our children, the love for this wilderness, to live in America where we have this wild land that we can uh, access and use. What'd you, what'd, you, what'd you boys see in there? Um, a bear. You saw a bear? It might. How big was it? And, uh, Show me with your hands. Was it this big? 
So, oh, it was about. It was only that big. Oh man, I bet your daddy would disagree. We arrived just after daylight and got six hounds this collared and ready to hunt. This is uh, Sissy. I call her the big Sissy. We then headed down the road trying to rig a bear. Rigging a bear is when a hound barks while he's in the truck after smelling the scent of a bear. Some might call it striking from the box. And it wasn't long until we did just that. We just. Uh... Struck the track, we're going to check it out see what size it is. We're checking baits up here and going down the road and uh, struck a bear track. We got, we got a nice track going. We're all ready to turn over something now. So, uh, ready? Happiness, a quiet box, and a loud track. <laughs> The bear was jumped quickly, but he was a runner, and run he did. Here. Some bears, especially smaller bears, seem to want to run and they don't want to climb a tree. This is the thorn in the flesh to the bear hunter, but it's also what keeps him coming back time after time. He's right here, right here, it's right between us. Right there, look. Here he is, here he is, here, 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 come on now, here. here. We finally yeah, caught up to the bear and saw him cross the road, exactly 39 seconds ahead of the dogs. In the hound hunting world, that's not a small gap to make up. We've messed the dogs up two or three times. Got to see the bear of each of us, but we haven't caught him yet, so. <laughs> Oh, went for uh, 10.78 miles, and the bear won. But the tree is a great thing, but it's not everything when you're training young dogs. So, uh, truly is the sport of it. To me, it's heritage. Um, it's in my ancestry as far back as I can remember. Uh, my family's had hounds. Uh, it's a sport, it's a truly uh, great sport. Uh, I've taken many still hunters out that didn't understand hound hunting. And when we got done, they were just as avid about saving hound hunting as they were saving still hunting. The one thing, and I, and I want to stress unity, uh, because if, if you're against another form of hunting, it doesn't matter if you're an avid hunter in your own uh, your own sport. You're no better than PETA if you're trying to stop somebody else. We're, we're a diverse nation and we're not all going to think alike. I'm a lifetime member of Michigan Bear Hunters uh, back in the late 70s uh, became involved. Without the association there wouldn't be hunting today. What I would say is belong to association. Get involved. The more people, the more people um, gets involved, the easier it is for everybody. You know, we've been fighting the fight for a long time, running to Lansing three, four, five times a year, uh, doing the fight, and lots of times I think to myself, you know, you can hunt out your life and not have to worry about hound hunting. But then I get to thinking how selfish that would be because my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids, what kind of life would they have if they wanted to hunt hounds? And that's what keeps me going. Well, oh, you're doing good, sis. <laughs>